It's the 27th of April today, 2007, and um, the film is now finished. The last three years has sort of ended. To take three years to create an hour and three quarters of, of entertainment or, or storytelling or some kind of cinematic fare, it's an incredibly imbalanced period of time. Three years to make an hour and a half. The book is so very descriptive, it's very evocative. It's a black comedy about a dying man. It's got this real sense of uh, like real urgency about it because the poor guy Stuart Brown is actually in the process of dying. It, it's a very serious piece, except that it's gloriously funny. He very much takes you on his journey with him to the point where you sometimes are more immersed in it than you would rather be. He died two weeks before it was actually on the shelves. I knew this was going to be different than any film I'd ever made. Action. I swear to God, I don't know what I'm going to charge you two boys with. I've got it. I'm going to charge you with dangerous parking. Roll camera. Oh. 35, take one. Set. And action. It all started when I walked into a branch of Waterstones in Newcastle one day and saw a book called Dangerous Parking. I loved the book, I thought it was fantastic. But my first thought was, I don't know what Richard's thinking here. I don't know how you make a film out of this. I had no intention of writing a screenplay. I genuinely had no intention of writing a script. I really didn't. I just needed to, I wanted to wake myself up. He just said in this email, I've done some writing. There are some pages here. And I read those pages and it was absolutely gobsmacking. I was amazed by what he'd written. And I just wrote back, whatever you do, don't stop. I kind of didn't want to stop. When I got up the next morning, I thought, I really enjoy I'd like to do some more today because I really enjoyed that. I had five separate emails, and by the end of that week, on that fifth email, there was a 100 page screenplay. I'm really grateful and lucky that I experienced those five days of that just the blood and the pumping and everything, which is fantastic. So that's how the script came about. <laughs> The financing of the film was really wrapped up in freedom for Peter Howard to direct the movie in the way he wanted to direct it. So the Hollywood route wasn't working for the usual controlling reasons and Hollywood would have turned Dangerous Parking into an extremely sentimental affair that wouldn't have worked. Line producer job on this, pretty much the same as anything other than obviously the burden of seduction of the thousands of additional phone calls that have been made in order to seduce, explain, cajole and woo people onto the show. We're at 145, I think, crew on this, which is about double what you would have expected, but that's in line with uh, comings and goings in lieu of people seeking paid work. We actually got to the point where we thought, crikey, maybe we're just not going to do this after all. Maybe it's just not going to work out because one by one we lost all of our cast that we thought we, had, we were going to have. You know, you have to make a commitment, possibly missing out on other work and not get paid and might not get paid for two years. You know, we couldn't find any sparks or grips and, and we couldn't, you know, and certain things were going wrong. We lost all our cast. Too many problems, too many crew missing, too many casts not locked down and I kind of kept thinking we could still go down. My name's Noah and I am an alcohol abusing, drug crazy, arrogant arsehole. Situation. Nobody jumped immediately into either, into either of our minds. And the reason for that is that Noah Arkwright is a very extraordinary 
very extreme character. I had said to Richard before many times, how are we going to get whoever plays Noah to play him the way I would play him? When we were originally casting the part, we had Noah from about mid-30s to early 40s. And so the actors that we were talking to to play that part were generally speaking in their 30s. We did that as a kind of commercial decision to see if we could... We were thinking about the poster. We were thinking about marketing the movie. We were thinking about raising the finance to make the film in the first place because that's how so many films get made, is around an actor. We had many, many actors who were going to play the part and then for various reasons they didn't. Things led to Peter taking the lead role and that, 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 was, that was a stressful week. It suddenly became clear that the suggestion was that I played him. And there were moments that came where it, it just came down to the sheer awful truth of it, of either either Peter stepped up to the plate and took the lead or we all just packed up and went up. In very many ways, he is the obvious Noah. If we thought actually two and a half years ago, well, who should play Noah? Well, maybe Peter should play Noah, because don't forget he's an actor too. There is so much of Peter in Noah Arkwright. So for him to be the writer, the director, and a leading actor is, on any film, that's an extraordinary authorial uh, investment. It was not intended. It was not what I wanted, and in many ways, it's still not what I wanted to happen. But I'm also glad that it did happen that way. Cut out there. Cut there. Perfect. 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 I think people are starting to see that there is this huge excitement, that there is actually the potential to do something truly extraordinary here, that we're not casting an actor because you're getting the finance in the movie. We're not casting an actor because you're a pretty poster boy. We're casting an actor because he's Noah Arkwright. And fucking hell, what a good idea. Let's cast an actor because he's right for the part. Right, I want a fucking bloody great rock of unstepped Tom Coke. If I don't get it right now, I will tear this nurse's fucking windpipe out. Get it? You know, just as things have got closer, he's taken on this really, this really calm feeling of what will be, will be. We'll either make it or we won't. He doesn't rehearse much anyway, so there hasn't been a huge amount of preparation or anything like that for him acting. He's always been a very natural actor. He kind of picks his lines up in the morning, learns them on the way in, and bosh. It really changes how you feel straight away. You just sort of, like, you sort of slouch about and feel like a bit of a prat, you know? A bit of a guy who thinks he's Liam Gallagher or something. It's really quite interesting. It just changes your whole demeanour. Two days to go. Two, with two days, to, is it two days to go? Taxi. Taxi. Oh, we can't afford a taxi. <laughs> Chew. <laughs> 49, take one. Set, action. It is showtime. It's day one. Dangerous Stay parking. Well. The day we never thought would arrive. Well, the first shot we're doing is just a POV shot through the window of the cab. Let's get back in the car. Okay, let's get back in the car. Okay, we're ready to go if you are. Okay. You bet your sweet life I'm looking for a bar. Any joint with a pulse will do. Don't think I'm going into the Alki home without a library, do you? We did stuff in the back of the taxi oh, on the way to Bramwell on the first day, and I just went a bit crazy <laughs> doing stuff I wasn't expecting to do. Uh, so it just went a bit. I did one take that was about eight minutes long. Far too much films, we can't afford to film. What there? 